How's it going, people? Doing fucking fine. Wanted to try a little something new. It's, it's a pint of pub ale from um, these folks. And I thought we might watch a video together and I'll, you know, go over it as we go along because this is a video addressed to all atheists. At least I think it is. Ooh, creamy. She's got a head on her, Captain. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Okay, let's start this video. And, you know, I'll pause it once in a while and we'll discuss. Uh, just fun to say Reverend Storm is representing hell. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. And if you just tuned in, uh, pay attention. Um, Reverend Howard Storm, you're right. Uh, you were an agnostic. You were an atheist. A atheist. atheist. Yeah. What's the difference again? I didn't believe in God. I, I uh, thought anybody that believed in God was an idiot. All right, hang on a second here. I guess not all atheists are the same. I don't believe that people who believe in idiotic things are idiots. I don't. They have a right to believe whatever they want, and I have a right to laugh at them for that. I don't think they're idiots. I think they're religious-hearted. I think they are deluded, or at least dishonest. This guy thinks they're all idiots, or at least he used to. All right, Mr. Reverend Howard Storm. All right, and he used to be an atheist, so he says. Okay. Okay. Uh, look into the camera and, uh, and, nice. and t talk to the people that are watching right now that think we're all idiots. <laughs> I don't think you're all idiots. I think you might be dishonest and or diluted, and it's a big snake oil salesman racket. But no, I don't think people are idiots just because they're diluted. So, I mean, drink all the Kool-Aid you want. It's your business. And it's my right to laugh at you. You used to think. Talk to them. I, um, he used to think that there it is. that don't believe in God, I just want you to know that I love you. Um... A I didn't get a valentine from him. Love you. God loves you. Your imaginary friend and, loves me. Um, we're not going to hold it against you that you're ignorant. Um, I'm ignorant about some things. I'm filling in the gaps. I don't know everything. <laughs> i got a lot to learn. I'll admit that. But I haven't lost my curiosity because I don't have dogma in my life. I believe there's plenty to learn. I don't believe that I everything that I need to know was brought up in the Iron Age. Uh, by a bunch of um, primitives. Okay. You don't know what you don't know. I know. And I was a college professor. I was an arrogant... You were a college professor. Uh, in what? What? Uh, mathematics? Um, art? Uh, what kind of professor? Son of a gun. It was an arrogant son of a bitch. Yeah. Um, Put it very mildly. I had... Son of a gun. Believe that man was the measure of all things. You believe that man was the measure of all things. That's funny. I don't. I mean, plankton is just mighty important to the world, too. Everything is got its own importance. I mean, even parasites probably have a reason to exist, I guess, if anything needs a, re a reason. I mean, let's say this. Everything fulfills a function, whether it helps mankind or not, being that we're not the measure of all things. I'm not the one who believes everything was made just for human beings. I think the world was around for, oh, 4.5 billion years or more, or less, I don't know. And we haven't been around that long. It wasn't made for us. Neither were the furthest galaxies. 
measure of all things. Sorry, I keep interrupting. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that if you don't believe in God, that doesn't mean you don't have a God. You've got a God. I got a your God. Your God is you. You think I'm God? God. And you got the no, I don't. Most worthless Puny God what? there oh. is. Wow. I didn't say, talk, brother. speak for yourself. And it's about time you got straightened up. <laughs> wow, he's mighty emotional. He's straighten us out. Because he used to be an atheist and a professor in something. Now he's professing. There's a higher power. And that's what we're here to talk about tonight. Okay, let me clarify one thing. You're not mad at me, right? He's just emotional. I'm saying that out of love. I am. Okay. I would go out and I'd give my life for my brothers and sisters. I believe you. What do you think? No, you neither, huh? He'd throw himself okay. right under a bus for but me. He'd like dive on top of a grenade for me. Is, he was just like us. They've lost their mind completely. Uh, I lost my mind completely? I don't think so. No afterlife. There is no out-of-body experiences. Out-of-body experiences? You were an educated college professor. That's projection. What happened University of California, Berkeley, my alma mater. Come on now. Okay, so you're a professor from Berkeley. Um, so was Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> Your point is? What, what happened to you? All Please of a sudden you saw what? At age of 38 years old, I knew everything. I knew what was right. I know it was true. And I had um, a medical emergency. You knew everything. Man, you were some professor. You were a professor of everything. I already said I don't know everything. I'm still finding shit out. That's why I'm interested in everything. I haven't lost my curiosity. <clears throat> I'm still asking questions. I knew everything. Of the um, yeah, I have a hole in my stomach. Duwatam? And, uh, I was wondering what a duwatam was. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I thought it said duwatam. <laughs> you're, you're such a tard. I mean a card. <laughs> duwatam. Uh, that was anyway. naughty. And uh, so to cut to the chase... Please. Um, I was looking at my body. People um, were calling me outside the room. People were calling. I went you. to them, and they said that I had to go with them. You're out of your body. And People calling the you. The room was Gotta security because my uh, wife was there, and my body was there, and my roommate was there. I was thinking. I kept telling myself, it's "This like is crazy. It's... I don't believe in this. It can't be happening." You don't believe it, so this it can't be happening. This can't happen. This can't be real. Except that I knew that it was the realest thing I was experiencing. This act. It was the realest thing. Something that can't be real was the realest thing. It's hyper reality. But hyper I know it's reality. Hard to explain, but yeah. it was more yeah. real than this is real. Explain. And there was a more real than this is real, as in reality. Hyper reality. Come with us, hurry up. We know you. And they took me on a very long journey. Are you sure you weren't following a big white rabbit with a pocket watch? <laughs> Got a long journey ahead of us. Drink me. Into an ever increasing closeness and darkness. Wow. And then um, I'm getting like really scared. Scary. And finally, I said, I'm not going with you any further. And with that, they turned on me and we began to fight. Now, it sounds like some dreams I've had. If they had, there were a lot of them, hundreds, thousands, I don't know. If they had. Wow, you fought a hundred or thousand? I mean, it would have been over in a few minutes, but that is not their interest. And There's time in your hyper reality? They want torment? Please torment us. On pain. Because they want pain. They are so devoid of love, so devoid of hope, so devoid of good. There is there's nothing left in them except pain. Their pain. And They're they probably want atheists. To inflict that pain on others. <sighs> and so um, I got to participate in their um, festival of pain. You make that sound so festive. A festival of pain. And um, I cannot talk about what they did because they are exquisite at debasing, tormenting, mm. demeaning, and destroying you. And, and the physical pain does not begin to measure up to the psychological Scary. emotional pain. Wow. Of tearing down wow. every ounce of ego and pride and... They left an awful lot, I see. <laughs> yeah. 
And um, this, when people talk about hell, hell isn't like this or that. If you had a thousand books of a thousand pages describing hell, it would only touch the surface of all the exquisite torments of hell. You mentioned Dante earlier. Dante? But it's but a tiny glimpse of what hell is. It's a work of religious fiction. It's a divine comedy. Dante. What the fuck? Now people say, well, in your experience, you were in darkness and torment. So I said, yes, that's an aspect of hell. This is your perceived this experience. For every type of alienation from God, for every type of hatred of God, for every type of rejection of God. I don't hate your imaginary friend. I don't reject him. If he were to step up and make himself known, I would offer him a cold one and we'd have us a chin wag. I reject stupid shit. I reject dogma. I reject religion. And I reject the limitation of imagination. I believe, I think it's a good thing that people keep an open mind. Um, in whatever form that takes, there's a hell wow. for that. Wow. And there are, if you, I hate the expression, but kindred spirits, he they're waiting that. for you, inviting you, taking you. Instead of the angels meeting people in a world angels. of light and all that loveliness, there's people of darkness waiting for you. They'll take you to the wizard. To take you to be part of their world. How do you get more real than... I'm here. I can feel, touch. More real than real? People ask me, was it like a dream? Is it like real to real? You know, you know that... Reality's a dream. Um, unreal quality to a dream. Like sometimes when you dream, you're going, this is a weird dream. I think I want to wake up now. Right. And then there's lucid dreams where you have trouble waking up from them. I've had those. They seem more real than real sometimes. They're kind of cool. I remember those, but one's better. You Usually fighting thousands of people. It's an illusion. Um, yeah, you know, a dream's an illusion. Experience, Unless it's your red, senses, red. your understanding, your comprehension is all so much heightened. So you can taste more, see more, feel more, hear more, yeah. know more. Yeah. You're just like. That an orgasm's so rocket over there. there. Like, life is like a dream. Life because is but a dream? Right now, this is what we know. This is our measure. Of you mean that Row Your Boat song is real? Is real? Life is but a dream? Is that we were created by God to be spiritual beings. We, our purpose is to be with God forever. That's what God created us for and what God wants. <laughs> to live with God forever as spiritual beings. So God, in his infinite wisdom, has given us this experience of the physical world. What kind of atheist was this guy? To prepare us to choose what we want to do for eternity. Wow. Eternity. Is that true. important? You know, God is not in the punishment business. God is in the love business. People. Yeah. Are you sure you've read this book? Hell. Millions of people are going to hell because they refuse to love God. They reject God. And, what? And it's, and it's horrible. And that's why I'm here. That's why I, I came here tonight from. I Hillary refuse Saturday to love United Odin States also. To tell people to choose God. Okay. How, how how did that yeah. change your life? And you came oh, back into your body. What was the... And everything. And I was, this is so I was, convincing. I wept for days and weeks because oh. I was like, okay, where am I going to begin rebuilding my life? Like, you know, okay, i got to give up the booze. i got to give up the cigarettes. i got to give up the women. I Save a fortune in prostitutes. i got to give up the lying. i got to give up the... the pers Wait a minute. He's going to give up women. Is, didn't he just say he had a wife? How does she feel about him giving her up? Or is he talking in general? Power, no more trolling. The, the need for fame. Like, you know, on and on and on. He doesn't on want fame. Control, He's just on TV. You know, and raging and stuff. Like, all that stuff's going to go. Where do I begin? How do I love people? I started, everybody I've met. You don't know how to love people? That's pretty sad. I'm sick in the hospital. Really, really sick. And everyone I met, I'm like, I love you. I'm like, Jesus, Jesus. You know, and they're like, and they're going like, back, 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 back,
All right, hang on a second. He has a near-death experience, a lucid dream. He was an atheist, and then he read the Bible. So right away, he's a very different person from me. I was a believer, and then I picked this book up and started reading it. It took me a summer, read it from cover to cover, and then I read it again. I did a bunch of underlining, and I took a bunch of notes, and I asked a bunch of questions, which is where the trouble really started. And then I decided, eh, I don't believe this shit. Yeah. He's the shock of God type of former atheist. I've met those kind. They're like, oh yeah, my parents were into religion, but I'm just so rebellious that it's cramping my style. Yeah, I'll convert later. I'm a backslider. Everybody in the world, you know, trying because I would, I would thunder read the Bible, and I figured if they wouldn't thunder believe read. me, if I read the Bible loud enough and strong enough, you know, and I had a pretty big voice, a teacher, you know, I could get it through. It teacher work, or something. Worked out real bad. Turned everybody off. And it was church. It was Turns me on. You know, um, helping the uh, teenagers in Sunday school and stuff like that, and um, participating in worship, and you know, I'm taking the kids on uh, camping trips and stuff like that. It's all about. Indoctrinating those young minds. So I've been working in the soup kitchen. Where I started to learn that it's, it's like soup kitchen. You mean where they I'm make you sure. listen to a sermon before you what eat? You used to I used to be poor. I know about that. Was someone that uh, would have tuned into a program like this and said, "Okay, everyone in the audience, that's all you know, made up." These stories are made up. You're trying to get ratings. Is that how you would have perceived it, or would you you just said? Everyone on that set and everyone in that studio are crazy. How I think everybody in that set is either delusional, they're brainwashed, or they're deceptive. And it's a con and they're making money and getting that tax-free status. Would you have, how would you have perceived this program? I know that there is an interest in God in everyone. No. There might be an interest in religion, because we're all saying, what the fuck? Yeah, religion is interesting to me, because I'm trying to figure out why people still believe this shit in the 21st century. Even if they say they don't believe in God. Even with you? Yeah. Especially with you. There's a battle going on, raging on inside of them. But I want to say something in response. He represents all atheists. They're all just like he used to be. Don't believe... You don't believe Don, don't believe me, I don't. don't believe TVN, don't believe the church. I don't. Go to the source. Go to the source, yeah. Read this, by all means. If you go to the source, if you say, Jesus, I need you. I've never believed in you, and I don't know if you're real. That's not Jesus, what I thought he meant. I need to know if you're real. Will you come into my life? If you do that, and if you mean it from your heart, and if you sit there and wait, and don't get all frustrated and get impatient and stuff like that, but just say, Jesus, Jesus, wait for it. please come into my life. I've been a rotten person. Have you? A lot of guilt there, huh? And I don't know why you touch a piece of filth like old. me, but please, Jesus, filth. come into my life. Which is what I did. He will come. You know, it may not be... Why didn't you do that before your experience? Good question. I didn't know. I wish some you idiot like me or you were done. I would say, you know... Idiot. <sighs> I don't think they're idiots. I think they're shrewd. You know what? All this philosophical speculation that you're doing all the time between existentialism and all this stuff, you know... Critical thinking and stuff? just ask them? If he's real. Wow. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's all it would have taken? Yeah, because I, oh. I, I really believe that he would have done something. You know, it doesn't, not, not necessarily going to be struck by lightning or run over by a truck or it, it, it may just be, as uh, John Wesley said, a strange warming of the heart mm -hmm. when you just know that you know that you know that you know. Wow. Wow. You, you, 
A burning in the bosom. Uh, allow me to quote mine a little bit. I'll just put it up on the screen. You know that you know that you know something. You know. That is the... That's a presumption. That is pretending you know stuff you don't know. I admit I don't know stuff, including whether there's a God or not. I just don't believe there is one. I'm willing to be wrong about that, but which God are we talking about? He knows that he knows that he knows what he knows. And he's not a bit deluded. A little brain damage with that duodenum. The little pieces of your story, you called on God in that kind of out-of-body experience? Yeah. You find, find that's a pretty fortunate situation. I mean, you well, don't... Well, I think I, I have to give credit to a woman whose name I don't know, and whose face I can barely remember, who taught a study to this little kid in Sunday school, Jesus loves me, this wow. I know. Wow. Childhood indoctrination. I knew it. So basically, he was indoctrinated as a child, much like me and many of you out there. He had a little teenage rebellion, probably. Got wild and found out how fun sex is and maybe did some drugs even, who knows. And driving fast in cars, doing bad things. And I've met guys like that. I've met people like that. And then the slightest thing happens to them and they go running back to their programming. That's why you brainwash them when they're young. I knew it. And that's what came to me in that horrible, hellish place of darkness and torment. Well, yep, no atheists in foxholes, except that's not really true either, but uh, yeah. That memory, but more importantly, memory. it came to me that when I was a little boy, I was convinced that that was true, that there was this really cool guy named Jesus who did love me. And I used to pray to him. I used to believe in him. But me as too. a teenager, you know, I just went astray. Teenager um, went astray. So you were a so backslider. That is really what came to you in this out-of-body experience. You were in a hospital. You flatlined. You died. And you left your body. Yeah. And boy, do I love to be part of Vacation Bible School. Because we get, we get kids who have never heard of Jesus except as a cuss word. You know, and, they, and you get to tell them about Jesus, and you see their little eyes light up. And you, you start know, another wow. generation of religious Here, the sweetest guy. Really? <laughs> I, it's just amazing. I mean, I, I, I'm glad I met him after the Afterwards, not back when you were an atheist. Yeah, the shock of God style of atheist. Telling you about heaven, and I was like, you know, that's a no-brainer. You want to go there. So Jesus was talking to him, but they cut a, some big section out because the fat boy's running on. Uh, so going to heaven, you want to go there. That's a no-brainer. And uh, and he persuaded me that that wasn't going to happen, and I needed to come back and do a little... Uh, right, good enough. Get right. Yeah, get right. Don and I know we're going to heaven, and there's nothing in the world no power that can stop that from happening. Not because Don and I are good people. We're not good people. Matter of fact, Don and I are here to tell you that we are sinners. So you're both a couple of lousy sons of bitches. You're going to heaven and there ain't a power in the world to stop you. You know, didn't they save uh, Ted Bundy? Good Mormon boy, by the way. And, um, oh, um... Uh, Dahmer, he got right with God, too. BTK, he always was right with God. He just kept getting right again. Yeah, not a power in the world is going to stop them from going to the happy hunting ground. And that all people, and us especially, deserve to go to hell. Oh, really? But we have put our hope, our faith, and trust in a man who was sent by God those are all the same words, aren't they, kind of, sort of? And a presumption of knowledge, or at least a pretension of it? 2,000 years ago, who said, I will come and take you to where I am. I have prepared a place for you. Wow. He said that. 
and it's written down in a book. The book of John. Oh. One of them. Come because he loves us, and he knows our faults, and he knows we're not worthy, and he knows you're not worthy, and he will take you there. And he has paid the price of all the rotten stuff we've done. All the bad Good things thing. Done. He's, it's covered, because he's a just God. And he wants He's a just God who lets unworthy people get rewarded and punishes good people because they didn't believe the right way. That sounds just, just fucked up. Us to be with him because he loves us. We are still, he made you. He made your mind. He made your hair. He, he didn't give you much. He made your face. He made your life. You're thanking and him for that face. He wants you to trust him and he will take care of you for all of eternity. Ask him to come into your heart. You don't have to experience forever and history, ever, eternity and never, never land. And you will know that nothing can keep you from heaven and from the arms of Jesus Christ. Anyway, that's that for that. I hope you learned something. I think we all did. Um. Anyway, um, I'll put the links to that video, and. Anyway, so now we know what Shaka God meant when he said he used to be an atheist. <laughs> and Venom Fang Boy and all those other former atheists. Yeah, they just didn't want to think about it. And then they got scared and went back to their childhood indoctrination. Yeah. See, all you got to do is wait for that burning in the bosom and then you'll know that you know what you know you know. Anyway. I'll do some more Passion of Mel soon and some DNC, but just had to get this out of my system. Peace the fuck out. And have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. Because, damn it, I am you ought to too. Ha, ha, ha.